Now you'll find out how to see the incoming planetary conjunctions of Jupiter, Saturn, Venus and Mars, learn how to observe two bright meteor showers, and behold the captivating buck moon. I promise, will be very interesting. July starts with an opportunity to see Venus and Mars close together in the sky. Throughout the entire month, these two celestial bodies will be illuminating the western part of the sky soon after sunset. Venus is one of the brightest celestial bodies visible during nighttime, so you won't have a hard time trying to find it. As soon as you locate Venus, direct your gaze to the area above it in order to locate Mars. Because the red planet is currently far from Earth, it's quite dim but you can identify it thanks to a slight reddish hue. When viewed through small telescopes, Venus reveals its beautiful phase that will be changing throughout July, while Mars appears as a diminutive reddish sphere. On July 20th, these planets will be also accompanied by the Moon, which will make it even easier for you to find them. On July 3rd, get ready to behold a full Moon with remarkable distinctions. Firstly, it will probably wear the crown of a supermoon, thus being located closer to the Earth than most other moons of the year. While the naked eye may not readily notice the difference, this July full moon will be approximately 7% larger than a typical full moon. Secondly, it will bear the title of the Buck Moon. It's one of the names given to the full moon of July by the Native American tribes, since this month new antlers emerge really fast on the buck's foreheads. However, don't expect antlers to grow on the full moon. Just a few days later, on July 7th, the Moon and Saturn will draw closer, creating a fascinating celestial conjunctions. Look southeastward approximately after midnight in order to find the celestial pair. Saturn will be situated above our natural satellite, and you'll notice how it will stand out compared to other stars, since Saturn is a pretty bright planet. Also, Saturn has a dim yellowish hue that makes it look like a planet even more. Two days later, Venus will reach its greatest brightness, casting a very radiant glow upon our planet. Look westward after sunset in order to find Venus. Trust me, it's impossible to confuse it with anything else. The phase of Venus will change throughout the month as it will be orbiting the Sun. Prepare for another celestial encounter on July 11th. The Moon and Jupiter will be located very close in the eastern sky at night, offering an opportunity for beginner astronomers to witness both the largest planet of the solar system and our lunar neighbor. Even through little telescopes, Jupiter reveals its magnificent disk, potentially allowing you to see its two biggest atmospheric belts. Around Jupiter, you can also see several bright stars, which are actually the Galilean moons of the planet. If you observe Jupiter for a duration of several days, you'll notice how the moons are slowly orbiting the largest planet in the solar system. As we approach the middle of the month, the new moon graces the night sky, because summer is the best period to observe the galaxy that we live in and the moon won't be polluting the sky with its brightness, July 17th presents a perfect moment to see the galactic center of the Milky Way. Also, observe deep sky objects like galaxies, nebulas and star clusters, as the moon's glow won't obscure them. At the end of the video, I'll show the brightest and the most beautiful DSOs visible in July. July 22nd will bring a fairly interesting celestial event. On that day, Pluto, the dwarf planet residing in the outer parts of the solar system, reaches its opposition. The opposition happens when Pluto, Earth and the Sun align in an almost straight line. During this alignment, Pluto is at its closer point to Earth, making it look bigger and brighter through telescopes. However, Pluto is an extremely dim object, which requires a telescope with a minimum aperture size of 250 mm in order to be seen. Also, seek out a remote area with minimum light pollution and get planetarium software like Stellarium to pinpoint Pluto's location. It's not guaranteed that you'll find Pluto on the first try, so persistence and patience are a must in this case. Use nearby stars as markers and allow your eyes to adapt to the darkness in order to find this dwarf planet. Fortunately, the wonders of July don't end there. The Delta Aquarius meteor shower reaches its peak on July 30th and will showcase a display of 15 to 20 meteors per hour. Outside of this peak period, from July 12th to August 23rd, expect, however, no more than 10 shooting stars hourly. Also, there will be a challenge to overcome called the Moon. 
Meteors can be easily overshadowed by both light pollution and the luminosity of the moon. During the peak, the moon will be prominently bright and positioned high in the sky, so next you should take the opportunity to observe the Perseids, which will start producing stars in mid-July and then peak in August. The end of July and the beginning of August will actually be the best time to find this elusive planet, which will be best visible in the southern hemisphere. Despite its relative brightness, spotting Mercury can be challenging due to the sun's glare. To locate the planet, direct your gaze toward the western horizon about half an hour after sunset. Utilizing a pair of binoculars or a small telescope can greatly facilitate the observation of Mercury. Now, what about the deep sky objects? Apart from hundreds of interesting celestial bodies, you can also observe three bright star clusters that are well positioned in the sky in July. In order to find these objects, I'd recommend you download the planetarium app called Stellarium. Once again, link in the description. Also, here's the picture of a star cluster that I took earlier using my little 60mm telescope and a phone camera. Escape light pollution in order to observe deep sky objects because beholding them in light polluted areas is quite lame. In any case, July 2023 holds a variety of easily visible astronomical events that you wouldn't want to miss. Remember to subscribe to this channel to see more future videos on space and astronomy. And as always, thank you for watching their interesting videos. Bye.